Today, I'm going to talk about how to begin to respond instead of reacting. Learning how to shift from reaction mode to response mode is probably one of the most important and impactful tools that can quite literally change your life. Because the reality of it is, most of us walk around immediately reacting to the things that happen to us. And instead of immediately reacting to the world around us, we can actually teach ourselves how to respond to it, allowing us to make more conscious choices into how we navigate the world around us so that we can feel proud and good about ourselves. This practice really does boost our confidence because we'll end up feeling more in control of ourself and our emotions. But before I teach you how, let's first talk about the difference between a response and a reaction. Starting with a reaction. A reaction is an immediate, knee-jerk, and often habitual way of interacting. It comes from our unconscious mind. And what it looks like really simply is a thing happens in the world, I feel some kind of way, whether it's upset, sad, angry, and near immediately, I do some kind of thing. And the more we begin to observe ourselves in these reactive moments, the more we'll see how patterned our reactions are, even how autopilot these reactions can be, meaning they seemingly happen out of our control. A lot of people call this programming, and it's really just the conditioned ways or the ways that we learned to react to our emotions since we were young. So now let's talk about what a response is. A response is a more conscious, often more objective way of interacting. When we stop living in that autopilot, we can begin to make choices outside of those immediate emotional reactions. So using that example, something happens. Say what happens is someone says something to us that upsets or activates us, triggers us. And I know for me, in those moments, I can find myself near immediately saying something mean or snarky right back to the person, only to afterward feel guilty, feel shameful even, wondering why the heck did I say that? And I end up feeling shameful as I imagine many of you do because in those moments, we might not have had the intention to say or do the thing that we ended up doing or saying, and it feels like it just sort of happened. So now our response in that moment might look like, I might still feel some kind of way about the comment that was said to me, whatever it might have been, but I might choose a different response in that moment. Instead of saying something that I might feel bad about later, I might take a few deep breaths, or I might word what I'm saying in a way that doesn't land in such a mean manner. Now, I want to point out, of course, these pathways, these emotional reactions that we're talking about, they've been paved through years and years and years and years of repeated behavior. Really simply, what this means is we've practiced these reactive habits, most of the time outside of our awareness, over and over and over again, making learning a new response difficult in the beginning. It will take time and it will take work. And likely you will fall into those old reactive habits and all of that is okay. Even small moments where you notice that you're able to respond instead of react are a huge win. So as you begin these next steps that I'm gonna go through in just a minute, I want you to note those moments and make it a point to celebrate each and every time you're able to shift from reactivity to responsiveness because it's a big deal. And there is so much power that comes in choosing how we can respond to the world around us. So here's how you begin that process right now. The first step in how to begin responding and breaking that habit of reacting might sound really simple. And that step is to pause. It's as easy as that, but of course, it's much easier said than done. We live in a society where everything is at near light speed. We're almost 24 seven available in contact with whoever it is that we wanna contact. And this makes pausing for a lot of us really difficult. But when we learn to pause, what we're doing is we're breaking that immediate reaction and we're giving ourselves just a moment, a bit of space to maybe actually think about what's going on, to maybe reflect how we feel, to maybe allow some of the stronger emotions to pass before we even make a choice about how we want to respond. Time itself and allowing our body to naturally downregulate and um, our emotions to turn the volume down on those emotional experiences really does allow us to begin to see the bigger picture of what's happening in that moment. So the first step again is to pause before 
we have that immediate reaction. The second step is to begin to practice what is called objective observation. So once we're paused, what we're going to do now is we're going to begin to separate what's happening from our story about what's happening. And this will allow us to objectively begin to see our circumstances a bit clearer. Because most of the time, what we're reacting to is the story that we've told ourselves, not the event itself. So a really common example of this could look like, say we're developing a relationship somewhere, whether it's a friendship or perhaps a romantic partnership. And say we're texting with them and for whatever reason, we don't get a text back for a few hours of time. And in those hours, we start to notice ourselves getting annoyed. We start to create stories. Maybe we're telling ourselves, oh, this person might not be interested in a relationship with us like we thought or like we want. And before we know it, before too long, most of us end up reacting to that story that we've created. Of course, we end up being upset if we're now thinking that the person that we're interested in isn't interested in us. So now to use objective observation in this moment, what that will look like is acknowledging what's happening in the moment. You might even say to yourself, okay, I haven't gotten a text back in a little while, maybe in three hours, whatever the time frame is. Objectively, that is what has happened. In these moments, we can even practice or thinking about it like we're looking at ourselves from above, like we're hovering, watching ourselves from overhead, and beginning to notice, what is it that I'm thinking in this moment? What is it that I'm feeling in my body in this moment? Doing this, objectively observing ourselves from this distance or from a different perspective, for a lot of us can help us start to pull ourselves out of that reactive spiral. And over time, we'll start to notice that we'll even begin to assign less and less of those meanings to what happens to us at all. And we'll be able to create space just to more objectively be with our changing circumstances. Without all of those stories, we won't have then the emotions or the reaction, and we'll be more likely to have the space to choose the new response we're looking for. The third step is you're going to then practice or shift your focus, I should say, on to your breath. Our breath is an intentional way we can begin to regulate our body. When we're in that reactive state, our body is actually in fight or flight mode. Our breathing gets fast and our mind starts to race. And usually all of that's happening outside of our awareness, meaning we're not even noticing that it's happening. As we begin to notice what's happening in our body in those reactive moments, as we become more aware of those sensations, we can begin then to intentionally use our breath to calm our body. And this can be as simple as slowing and deepening our breath. I like to even just put a hand on my belly while I'm doing that to remind myself to breathe in and out from that deeper space of my belly. And doing that does two things. The first thing that slowing and deepening our breath does is it signals to our body that we're safe and that we can relax. It'll calm those reactions in our body. And the second thing that focusing on our breath will do is it will give us a place to focus our attention, right? Not on those stories that will continue that emotional reaction and then likely that habitual reaction, but we can shift our focus now from those stories that will likely still be there in the beginning and begin to pay attention to our slow, deep breath, which is also at the same time calming our body and giving us more of a chance of remaining responsive. And now the fourth step, in my opinion, is the most important step. And this step is to forgive yourself each and every time when you do react. Because the reality of it is those reactions are wired into us and we're human. And we've practiced these reactions for many of us outside of our awareness for our lifetime. I still find myself in these emotional reactive moments even as I've been practicing them. No one alive is without these emotional reactions. They are just part of our lived experience, learned in our childhood, and then repeated outside of our awareness. So I'm sharing this hopefully to normalize for all of you listening and to throw away any expectation that you might have in listening that this information will somehow immediately remove these reactions from your neurobiology. 
And again, I'm using those words intentionally because they are wired into you, into your mind and into your body, which is why they won't immediately go away, which is why acknowledging that all of these steps and shifting from reactions to responsiveness is a process. So I hope and suggest all of you to remove any expectation of perfection and to begin to practice this step, forgiving yourself each and every time with compassion and with grace that you do notice one of those whole old habitual reactions because they probably are going to stay around for a bit of time until you practice shifting more regularly into this responsive space. And I do want you to give yourself a chance to practice and to just notice as things shift and change when you begin these four steps. Noticing how you feel when you react versus when you respond and how good it feels as you notice yourself becoming more calm, more grounded in those emotional moments and more able to respond in the way that you want to or that you choose to. And I'd love to hear from you listening. If you've been practicing shifting from reactivity to responsiveness, I'd love to hear what you're noticing in your mind, in your body, and in your experiences as you're making this foundationally powerful shift. Leave it in the comments below.